so I've never been a fan of black and white film. You know, while working at weddings, black and white preset is god blessing. Especially when you didn't make it with light, or when couldn't make it because of cheap AliExpress LED bulbs where each had a different color temperature. But the color of film is one of the reasons why today we switch from this perfect digital cameras to analog photography. I've decided to step out of my comfort zone and shoot with Ilford XP2. But XP2 is not a standard black and white film, cause it's made to be developed in C41 process. A short theory. Standard black and white film is processing in a bit different way than color negative. When you take the color film to the lab, they just put the film in machine, which is called Nomen Omen Mini Lab, and all the magic happens inside. And black and white must be developed manually in different chemicals. So if your lab develops film just because they slept through the moment and didn't sell their machines in the early O's, they probably don't give a shit about black and white film. Anyway, I put Ilford in my point-and-shoot Canon Prima 5. For a trip to Warsaw I took also my biggest love, Canon 650 with 23 frames of Kodak Portra 160 and a bunch of other stack which I haven't even used. But before the right breakfast in the most beautiful McDonald's in Poland, which is located on the side of a restaurant that operated here in the 1950s, and its formal decor is still visible in the form of paintings on the walls and ceiling. So, the capital. It welcomes us with the majestic Palace of Culture, which was called Stalin's Palace during the Communist era. Actually, Warsaw first greets us with the view of the homeless sleeping near the station, and only then with the palace, but let's not ruin this idol. By the way, Warsaw is a mix of architecture from Baroque to Brutalist, and it's the latter that impresses me more personally. And due to the fact that I've been here several times for this trip, I had a plan to visit places related to Brutalist, Modernist and the time of Communism. So I'll understand if someone turns off the video right now. After waking everyone in the neighborhood with rattling suitcase wheels, we finally reached the apartment. Our Airbnb is on Novesha Street, which means New World, but looks like a third world, and we are in the very center. Prima 5 has autofocus and focus lock, but even so, sometimes photos turn out like this, where nothing is in focus.
A few meters from Warsaw's historic old town you can find this building. It doesn't fit the neighborhood, but hey, its balcony looks like they are floating in the air. I mean, the thing about brutalism is to see the beauty in the ugliness. Another work of architects from levitating balconies. This building is on Koja Street, but due to the fact that during the communist era mainly politicians moved in here, the idea was to hide this building from the commoners. I mean, working class, normal people. Anyway, I think it worked because you can't even see it from Koja Street, on which it is located. Yes, it's not Miami, it's still Warsaw. There is a palm in the middle of one of main streets here. Of course it's fake. The meaning and the history of this palm is as complicated as family relations in important beauty series. And I think its initial meaning has been lost somewhere along the line, so... All I can say is that the palm was supposed to be there for a year, counting from 2002. This beauty is called Hammer and I think there is no reason to explain why. In the 70s and 80s apartments were sold here for dollars, which in a country with an inconvertible currency made the Hammer synonymous with luxury. On this distinctive tough floors was a restaurant, probably with a stunning view. This abandoned stadium is a little bit iconic here in Warsaw. It's not so far from the city center because you can even see the Palace of Culture in the background. It has this unique referee tower and, well, it's not truly abandoned because the athletic track around the field is quite new and open for everyone who enjoys airbags and running. 
not necessarily when escaping from security. Speaking of security, there are at least two guards equipped with a bicycle and a mobile monitoring station. And the stands are fenced off, so it's not so easy to get inside the stadium. At least during the day. This is a hair salon called Hairdresser's Husband and, well, somehow it doesn't convince me. It's a little bit expensive in here and the guy is only married to a hairdresser. I mean, it's not United Kingdom, you don't get the job because being Queen Sun. And the salon is on Winnie the Pooh Street and in Poland name Winnie was changed to Jacob, so it's Jacob the Pooh. Such useless fact. But what about Ilford XP2? Like in Liner Skinner, I'm a simple kind of man and I'm not into this technical stuff and everything, so I can only say I like it. You know, sometimes black and white films look very flat, like they were black and grey rather than black and white. Here everything looks nice, contrasting and clean. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe this stack. And it's 400 ISO, so for me the most versatile film speed. So finally we made it home and the story ends where it began. For me it was the first time in years when I took the camera for a private trip and it's all because of film photography. The very next day I just took the films to the lab, after a few hours there was an email with scans, no ripping from the SD cards, no selection, no editing, no hours in front of the monitor, only pure photography. And although Canon Prima 5 is not Contax or Yashica, the lens is nothing special, the autofocus is not reliable, I really like this gear. And I felt a little bit like on my school trips in the late 90s. For $50? Well, it was worth it. 